org chart. Right? Who was visualizing an org chart when I said hierarchy? Anyone? Oh, come on. <laughs> You're lying. <laughs> come on, this is the place to be truthful. All right. It's not an org chart. It's what's called a directed acyclic graph. Right? Now, a directed acyclic graph has certain characteristics. The first characteristic is that the hierarchical relationships are many to many, not one to many. Therefore, if I, could, if I create a metric, that metric can be involved in many other metrics. It can be used by other metrics. And this metric can be created by many other metrics. So there's a many to many relationship throughout the hierarchy. Okay? But there is still a hierarchy. They must come up to something. You start with business goals at the top level. And at the lowest level, what's the lowest level of this hierarchy? We're introducing a concept called knowledge management right now. What's, what's at the lowest level of a me measurements hierarchy in a large corporation? You've got business goals from the CEO and the board of directors. What's at the bottom? Bottom line. Bottom line? No, that's up here. Tactics. The guy in the mail. Tactics. The, the, say that? The guy in the mail room. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. The guy in the mail room has to have three months, six months, twelve month goals that are quantifiable or measure okay. and measurable that can be traced all the way up to corporate goals. If this person is working on something and he his work, his work product cannot be traced to a corporate goal, then he's working on the wrong thing. Right. Get it? <coughs> That's the goal of the hierarchy. So, here's some examples of directed acyclic graphs. I like this one because, I mean, it shows you've got nothing and then you've got three values, three metrics, let's say, over here. And these two can come together to form this. And this one and this one can form that one. And this one contributes to these two. And eventually they come up here. That's all nice. But trust me, it never looks like this. This is theoretical. Straight out of a mathematics class. I mean... You can see all the pretty mathematical things they did here. Okay? It'll never look like this. Okay? This is closer to what it'll look like. If you look over here to this one, you can clearly see the many-to-many the many relationships. There are many things that contribute to this, and this contributes to many other things. Often, when you begin a measurements program, it's real hard to tell what the top-level measurements are when you look at the graph, because everything relates to everything else. Consequently, because of this many-to-many -many relationship, implementing a measurements program using Excel is not a good idea. Excel does not support many-to-many -many relationships very, very well. You can do it in Excel, and probably 90% of companies do it in Excel. Okay? and yet they'll all run into the same problem over and over and over again. You know, two people change the same metric every three months, and they keep flip-flopping what a metric means over and over and over again. Okay, and they say, oh, well, we must have two metrics. No, you don't. You have the many-to-many -many relationship, and, you, and Excel doesn't support that. Okay? So you see conflicts when you, you, you deal with Excel. You see things getting dropped that shouldn't be. Right? Things get lost when you do it in Excel. It's not the appropriate tool to do a measurements hierarchy. But, not, like I said, like 90% of the time, that's what's used. So now we're going to move on to analytics. Analytics, a lot of people think, is like the holy grail of um, business intelligence. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of business value in here, but I don't want to call this the holy grail. I want to call this the sucky grail. <laughs> this is the most painful thing about business intelligence is analytics. And I'll tell you why. Because the output of most analytical programs is one sentence. And the cost of the cheapest analytic program I've ever run was $50,000, and most of them are multi-million dollar programs, to come out with one sentence. Okay?
valuable sentences, not because it costs that much to find them, but they're extraordinarily valuable to the business. Okay. I see quizzical look. You want some examples of valuable yeah, yeah, yeah. sentences? <laughs> okay, a valuable sentence could be something like, we've been spending 60% of our marketing budget to the top 10% of our customers. But we found that in the middle 20%, the next 20%, that the money is four times more valuable. In other words, stop spending up here and spend more money down here. We'll get better bang for the buck. Okay? Where did that come from? What is that? Okay? Analytics is about predicting and improving business performance in the future. You can't do anything about the past, usually. But you can do something about the future. Okay? I'll give you another real life example of analytics. Um, there's a concept, oh, it's my next slide, I think. No. This is my calm slide. That's a good one, though. Yeah. Be calm, be peaceful. Okay. Let it be known. There's oceans of data out there. All right. In the last 10 years, the smallest database I've built is a terabyte in size. Okay. You do lots of processing on it, and you come up with boatloads of information, reports, and uh, charts, and graphs and um, executive information systems and you know, all sorts of things. And you're doing this in FileMaker? Hmm? And you're doing this in FileMaker? No. <laughs> I don't work in FileMaker. But you can. That's a really good question. There's, there's a point in a few more slides where I'll, I'll talk about how you can do something really cool in FileMaker. Okay? However, out of all this oceans of data, boatloads of information, there's only teaspoonfuls of knowledge, true business knowledge. And like I said, it's one sentence long. Okay. So there's this is a process called business knowledge discovery. <clears throat> it's something called pattern-based analytics. The neat output, the really valuable part of the output is that it reveals intelligence that is hidden in the data and the information. The teaspoonfuls of knowledge, hidden. Okay? Trust me, it is not obvious. It's never just sitting there and you've got to find it. Okay? There are parts of it everywhere and you have to put it together. You have to discover it. It is a process. All right? Now, there's two tools that are um, very common. There's an OLAP tool. And there's a data mining tool. Okay? OLAP is a very common concept in business intelligence. It means online analytic processing. It's kind of like reporting, except you can drill into something and you can target, you can drill across and look at other areas. You can drill down, you can drill into something. Those are all OLAP functionalities. But OLAP is top down. You ask a question, you sit down, you play with the data, you get an answer. Question, answer. Okay? That's not a good business intelligence process. Because let's say you had 4,000 possibilities. Are you going to run 4,000 queries to figure out which one's best? You could. It would take a while. But let's say there were 40,000 possibilities or 400,000 possibilities or 400 million possibilities. Now how many queries do you going to run? Okay? Not the right way to go. So the right way to go is data mining. Data mining is a bottom-up process. Right? The common tools for data mining are like SAS or SPSS. The common tools for OLAP are uh, Cognos, MicroStrategy. Um, some people think business objects is an OLAP tool, but really business objects does not have an OLAP capability. It can make you think it has an OLAP capability, but it really doesn't. Okay? Which is 